Today we're in the Regional Print Centre and we're going to look at screen printing. Uh, I'm going to take you through the process of applying a photo stencil to the screen. So the stencil, that the image that we're going to be working with today is a drawing which I have a laser copy of and we're going to be using this as the photo positive. The, so the screen we're working with is a hundred T mesh, which means it has a hundred threads per square inch. The size of this screen is, is, is 40 centimeters by 56. So if you compare the size of the image to the mesh on the screen, you will see that there's plenty of area around the image where the ink, once we start printing, can sit as the squeegee passes over the image. So let's move on to the process. The solution that we use to coat our screens for photo stenciling is made by Kiwo and it's Azacol Z1. It comes in two parts and uh, they are combined and mixed together um, by the facilitator here at the Regional Print Centre. So there's always some ready to use, which we store uh, in, uh, in a cool place. So to apply the, the solution, we use a coating trough. And the coating trough is made of aluminium, comes in various different sizes, and it has two st stops on the end to stop the solution running out. Um, sometimes they come glued onto the end of the um, trough and sometimes they are loose. Um, they're easy when they're loose because you can easier, easily clean the, um, the trough after we've used it. So I always like to show people a dummy run of coating the screen um, before we actually start. So I'll do the same here. So I tend to hold the trough in such a position like that. So you have the, you can apply the pressure to the bottom of the trough to keep it against the mesh. So we only really need to coat the area where the image is going to be. The rest is going to be covered by tape, which we put on and remove each time we print. The trough is in the size of the trough is important because you don't want the end of the trough sitting against the aluminium frame because if you have that you can't apply the pressure on the mesh which would give you a fine coating on the screen. So always choose the, the trough which will be just sitting on the mesh. So once the, the trough is full, I tend to put the, the trough against the mesh, a bit of pressure, and then I will let it run onto the screen, onto the mesh, and I will then let the edge here, this flat end section, sit flush against the mesh. So there's no, no beads that will run along the outside of the trough. Uh, firm pressure at the bottom and then just slowly take it up to the top, tip the solution back into the trough and then just flick it off. Uh, some people coat on both sides. We have always coated on one side here at the print center and that seems to have been fine. So let's go through the process. So I'm doing it in uh, normal, normal classroom lighting conditions um, and we've always done that here. We've never had a problem with that. I'm just going to put the top back on, get my gloves out.
So holding the screen at an angle of say 60 degrees, something like that. Um, you can see that the solution is in the trough and now I'm just gonna let it run onto the mesh. Once it's there, I apply pressure and I'm just slowly gonna pull it up to the top of the screen. Again, stop well before the edge, let it run back in and then I'm just gonna scoop it off. And that's it. There is a little bit of a bead, but it's nowhere near as bad as it could be. So I'm just gonna smooth that off so that it will dry a bit more evenly. That's it. And then we put it into the drying cabinet to dry. So I'll put the, the solution back into the container, back into the, uh, the cool cabinet, and then it can be uh, reused. Then just wash up the uh, utensils that we've been using today. And that's that stage done. The majority of the screen printing we do here at the Regional Print Centre, we use um, laser printed copies as the um, as the photo positive um, but what we need to do we need to treat these copies to make them transparent and the way we do that is by applying oil to the paper so we use baby, baby oil but it doesn't necessarily have to be baby oil it can just be any oil and we will just saturate the paper with this oil. So as you can see I'm rubbing it all over the surface of the paper and it does change the texture of the paper. It makes it almost like a parchment in a way. It's, it's quite unusual what happens to it. So I'm just taking it on the other side. And I will hold it up to the light to make sure that I've got everything that I need to to get on it. So the whole surface is, is covered in the oil. You can tell if it's not because the paper stays in its original state as a, as a white surface. This one is doing fine. So what I'm going to do now is remove as much of the oil as I can. So again taking some paper towel and I'm just going to go over the image and just remove as much as possible. You don't want any of the oil getting on the surface of the screen because it can deteriorate the image that we are um, putting onto the mesh. So we just keep blotting it with paper and drying it with a paper towel until we've got to the state where it's it's quite dry but still transparent. And you can see that there's no shiny oil on that. Well there is in a bit there so let's just get rid of that. Um, and that's ready to go. So we're just waiting for the screen to dry now. And when that's dry, we'll go on to the next stage. The coating that we've applied to the screen is now dry, so we can move on to the next stage. And we're gonna put the, um, the photo positive exposure onto the screen. So using an exposure unit, which is a big conundrum like this, we place the image onto the glass and we put the screen face down on top of the positive. Position it central to the, the screen itself, like so. And then we've got plenty of area around for, as I said before, for a reservoir for 
the screen ink that we're going to use to print it. So we'll close the, the lid, we clamp the top down. Now here, I hope you can see that, let me just check. Yeah, so here are the controls that we have for the, um, the exposure unit. Um, we've got a vacuum, uh, we measure in light units, so we've got a counter of the light units, we've got a stop and, ca and cancel button, we have um, a counter, and we also have a button for fluorescent tubes. It's not very often we use this because if you use this when the, the screen is actually on the, the glass, it will start the exposure of the screen. So what I need to do first of all is press the vacuum. So switch the vacuum on. You can hear the suction taking the air out and the rubber mat on top is pulling the screen flat. So there's, there's no gap between the glass, the screen mesh and the image in between. So we can check the exposure time, unit time that we have, which is 21, which I'm gonna just tweak a little to 23. So everything's ready. So at the moment, uh, on the switch, we have a red button, which is the cancel with a red light, and we have a, a green, which is the start, which I'm gonna press now, and we'll have a green light come on. So that begins the exposure of the unit. We have a, a, a counter here, which will count down from 23 to zero. It takes a little time for it to warm up, um, and then the, the countdown will begin. When it reaches zero, the red light will come on, which means that the, the exposure has stopped, and we will hear the fans start to cool the, the exposure unit. For, uh, then we can uh, switch the vacuum off and take out the screen and move into the drying uh, the washing out. So we can see that the red light has come on. We can hear the fan coming on, which signals that we've finished the cycle. So now we can switch off the, the vacuum. We can unclip the top and the suction will release. Now we can take out the screen which we've exposed. You will see that the screen has turned from green to a blue colour and that's the, the normal course of events when you're exposing the screen. So we move into the, the washout unit just to wash away the areas that we haven't exposed. So using just a basic garden hose wash we're going to start that process now so I turn the tap on and I'm going to soak the screen on both sides and then start working on washing out the image so what I'm washing out is the area on the the image which was black that's what's going to wash away and that's the area that's going to print One side. Second side. So you can see that there is something there and there is making a difference. So I'll just continue washing away.
side as well. I'm just using my fingers and just gonna rub very lightly over the image. it and hold it up to the light and have a look at the mesh and see if I've washed out everything that will wash out. Yeah that's looking pretty good. Um, yeah I'm happy with that so I'm gonna put it back in the drying cabinet, let it dry and then it is ready for printing. <laughs>